Man, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of EOS. It's 1090 Jake, man. I'm rocking with y'all. Let y'all rocking with me. For this video, I'm going to be telling y'all the story of somebody named Yogi. And this story is coming out of something CI. This was 2013. This was my first prison. It's technically an adult prison, but it has a section for the youth defenders, which is tiny. I mean, it was probably, I think, four dorms total. You had... C dorm, D dorm, E dorm, and F dorm. So yeah, that was it. Four dorms, 14 to 18 years old, and this compound was off the chain. The second we got there, we start hearing about the TOHs, which is the test of hot, which is like a prison ritual that 99% of the people within the youth defender prisons are going to go through. Now, some of them are more violent than others. Some of them can be simple fights getting jumped, things like that. Then there's the more gruesome ones where people are being sodomized with broomsticks and having to be put on shit bags. You got some people that are poked up a couple hundred times. Some people have boiling water poured on their genitals. It gets savage. And keep in mind, this is 14 to 18 years old. So the extortion rate is at an all-time high at this compound because when we went to hit canteen, you can only get 15 items. So people were starving, people were hungry, and you know, if you weren't willing to go the extra mile to keep your food, there were plenty of people willing to come and take it. Now, I was in confinement already. Uh, this is my first confinement experience. It's horrible. The cells are tiny. They're disgusting. There's roaches inside of the cells. There's spiders. There's all these different kind of bugs. And you know, the CEOs come to my door and they tell me to cuff up. I'm getting a bunkie. I know what time it is. So, you know, I go to the door, I cuff up, I go against the wall, I'm facing the grated window. They open the door, I look back, and I see this small, you know, I, I don't want to say intimidated, but he definitely had a look to him that wasn't overly confident. A small Spanish kid, you know what I mean? And he was, I forget, height-wise. I mean, he was shorter than me, but he wasn't that short. And he was dead skinny. Like, he had no weight on him whatsoever. So, of course, being that we are in prison, this is a savage environment. If somebody looks at me and thinks they can try me, they're going to try me. I'm looking at him the same way. I'm like, you know, if it really came down to it, if I wanted to extort this kid in here, I could definitely do so. I wasn't that big on extortion. I mean, we almost killed the kid in the first dorm when we went to poking him up and he passed out and we had to shove him under the toilet and we didn't know if he was going to wake back up. I wasn't trying to catch more time, catch a life sentence. It wasn't worth it for me. You know what I mean? And to be honest, I shouldn't have been doing the extortion or oppressing people at all, but it's the influence of the total compound. I was fully partaking in it, especially due to the fact that I wasn't getting money sent to me. So I didn't have that sympathy. I had these hunger pains, which to me was more important. So we get to talking once the CEOs leave, you know what I'm saying? I'm asking him, what's your name? Where you from? He says his name's Yogi and he's from Tampa. So I'm like, oh shit. You know, like, Home team, what's up? What part of Tampa you from? He tells me whatever. We just start talking. And, you know, it was good vibes. It wasn't nothing crazy. He starts showing me his pictures. I'm going through his pictures. And I see I see this girl. And I'm like, hey, bro, how you know her? And my tone, I think my tone kind of changed. Because I was kind of like, how you know her? You know what I'm saying? And y'all will find out why in a couple of seconds. But he's like, oh, that's that's my cousin's girl. I'm like, your cousin's girl? Who's your cousin? He says, yeah, yo. So I'm like, oh, shit. The girl in the picture. I'm not going to put her name out there. Um, but the girl in the picture was a girl I was talking to before I went to prison, before I got locked up. You know what I'm saying? Um, I seen her, I believe, for the first time. At a grocery store, I walked inside of the store. It was me and my dog. And I had a lot of money on me at the time. And when I walked in, 
she was working at the register, and then there was another homegirl that was working where they be selling the blunts or whatever. So it's me and my dog Camilo, Free Milo. He about to come home. So I was trying to break down the hundreds into twenties. I didn't want the hundred dollar bills. I wanted the twenty dollar bills. So I walked up and I asked. I said, "Hey, can I cop a pack of blunts?" So she's like, "Oh, can I see your ID?" I'm like, come on, you really finna try me for the ID? Now, this isn't the girl that I'm talking about. The girl who I started talking to was over at the register, but she saw the whole thing. So I'm talking to Shorty. I'm like, you really finna try me for the ID? Like, come on, what's up? Let me just cop that. Da -da -da, you can keep the change. She's like, I can't do that. We got cameras, da da da, this, that, and third. So I'm like, all right, it's cool. Can I get change? She's like, how much you need? So I pull out the hundreds. She's like, um, uh-uh, like, we don't have all of that. I'm <laughs> like, what you mean? Like, how much can you do in 20s then? She was like, I can probably do, like, 100 or something. I'm like, oh, nah, it's straight. But the whole time we're talking, she kind of had, like, a flirtatious vibe, and she's kind of like, like, why you got all of this? You know what I'm saying? Like, what are you doing? She knew I was up to something. She could tell, because at the time, I'm tatted up and whatever, and um, I just looked like I was up to no good, to be honest. But there was a pawn shop right next to, you know, the grocery store, like a couple stores down. It's in the same plaza. So I was like, I right, bet I'm finna be back. So I go over to the pawn shop. I go inside of there, right? And I walk up to the lady. It's a white lady, and she's looking all suspicious at me and my dog. And um, you know, I'm like, Can I can I get change? She's like, How much do you want change for? So I take out the money. Three thousand. This lady Went through every single bill that I had, checking every single bill. Mind you, this is all hundreds that I had. You know what I'm saying? She's checking every single bill. Literally, the last bill, she says, oh, I don't know about this one. I can't cash this in. I'm like, what? She's like, oh, the, the market, it, just, it, it doesn't look right on this one. I'm not sure if this is legit. Lady. Out of $2,900, you think I'm trying to scam you off of a hundred? But I took the $2,900 in 20s and then the other $100 bill that she ain't want to touch. And then we went back to the grocery store. Now we get back into the grocery store. I gave the hundred to Milo. So Milo walks up and he's able to buy the blunts. I don't know what it is. He has some type of ID, but he a year younger than me. So somehow he pulls it off. We get some guy see a Vegas and we go back into his whip, right? And he's like, oh, you know the girl, da da da. I'm not gonna put a name out there, but he's like, that's where she works at. She was just right there at the register. And I had her on Facebook at the time. We done talked a little bit back and forth, but I ain't really pressed the issue. But that was the first time she saw me in person. I ain't really even see her at that time. You know what I'm saying? So we drive off in the whip. I start talking to her back and forth on Facebook. You know, we start talking. It is, you know, what it is. And through talking to her, I find out that she had an ex named Yayo, who was a GD. He's a gangster disciple. And he was in prison. You feel me? But I didn't give a fuck about dude. You know what I'm saying? I knew she fucked with him. She had his name tatted on her wrist that said Yayo 74. I wasn't worried about none of that shit. Like, she was on that GD shit too, even though she wasn't a GD. Like, she would talk about it or use their lingo or whatever. But I ain't care about none of that. You know what I'm saying? Like, she gonna respect mine. I'm gonna respect hers. And it is what it is. We was just talking at that time. So I'm telling this whole story to Yogi, who, you know, we're in the cell at the time. And he tells me that she mailed the pictures to Yayo. Yayo gave the pictures to him or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, I used to talk to her. And I pulled out a letter from county jail. And I show him, like, yeah, she was writing me when I was in the county. He's like, nah. So he gets on the door and yeah, hey, Yayo, Yayo was upstairs. I'm thinking this man's at another prison or something. I had no idea that the girl I'm talking to who says that her man is in prison, I would end up at the same prison that dude is at. You know what I'm saying? Like, this was a crazy situation. I'm like, what the fuck? So he yells up to Yayo. They get to talking. He's like, yo. I was showing him some pictures or whatever, and he knows Edna, like, he was fucking with her on the street. He got letters from her and all. So, Yayo is on the door. He's like, what? Man, flip that man. Flip that man. He's telling Yogi to fight me. You feel me? And Yogi looks back, and I know Yogi ain't finna. Yayo 
never seen me outside of the cell. So Yayo doesn't know what I look like or the size difference between me and Lil Yogi. You feel me? Like that wouldn't even be a fair fight. Not only that though, Yogi was the youngest person at the compound. Jit was only 14 years old. So it's like... That ain't even cool to do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm 18, bro. You 14. I'm not about to fight you. You know what I'm saying? And then not only that, but there was two Crips in the cell next to us. There was a Crip named Flex. Shout out to Flex. That's my dog from Orlando. And there was a Crip named Bird from St. Pete. So Bird gets on the door and yells up to Yayo. He's like, ah, Yayo, he fucking your bitch. So Yayo's tight. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody in this confinement... Dorm, quad, whatever you want to call it, they hear this conversation. You know what I'm saying? I had no idea what it was finna stir up, but you know, that's just, it's a small world, especially when you're in a small city like Tampa. But me and uh, Yogi, we start talking. I'm asking him why he's in confinement. And he tells me one of the craziest damn stories that I've heard out of prison. So something CI, the way the dorms are, is you'll have the dorm like this, and then there's a pot that goes out the back. So it looks somewhat like a small T. Like it goes across, and it has this little pot that goes up. That's the layout of the dorm. Now, that little pot that comes out, that's the officer's booth. And there's a back door to the officer's booth, so they can leave through the back. But the sides, you know, each side has its own exit, and the doors at something CI were like submarine doors. Like they had a fucking steering wheel on them. So you would have to like crank it this way and then open it up. You know what I mean? Like it was mad weird. You know what I'm saying? But Yogi's telling me the story about this big ass crash that popped off. A crash is like a riot. That's what we call it. Like everybody just started crashing. And they plotted and planned this little routine that they were going to do, and Yogi played a major role. So the CO apparently was friendly with some of the inmates and would let them come in the booth, or if they were orderlies or whatever, they'd stand in the booth, they'd talk shit with the CO and hang out. And some of these COs would just sit back in their chair and try to be cool or whatever, and just more or less let people do what they want to do. Well, in this case, when you're in the booth, the booth has two doors, one on each side of the dorm. It has a back door where that goes into the back hallway where the bathroom is. And then there's a back back door, which at the end of that hallway is how they can leave the dorm through the back, being the COs. We're not allowed back there. That back door to the hallway, though, was open and Yogi threw a razor. So the CO, you know, he's sitting there. He doesn't see anything. And Yogi's like, hey, sir. There's a razor right there on the floor. So the CO looks back, he sees the razor, and he walks over to pick it up because, you know, there's a razor on the floor. But when he walks over, Yogi slams the door shut and locked the CO out of the dorm. Now, while this happened, Yogi already told me that they were prepping the prison doors. And what they did was they took sheets and they tied the sheets to the steering wheel that was, you know, the door opener, like the door handle. And they tied the sheet over to the metal bunk. And what they were doing was locking it, basically, so nobody could come in. No COs were able to come inside of this dorm at the time. And now the CO that was in there just got locked out from the inside. So right after he shuts the door, Yogi starts pulling on all the wires and shutting off everything, shutting off lights, shutting off cameras, and the dorm started to shake. Everybody just started popping off. People are getting hit with locks, socks, bricks, cut. People are getting foot lockers thrown on them. People are jumping across bunks, hitting each other up, cutting, firing each other up. It's just going down. It was just crashing, crashing, crashing. I don't know how many different gangs was involved, but in a situation like this, pretty much everybody's going to get off. Everybody's going to hit something up. And I'm not sure if it was this exact incident 
But a CO was even fired up at one point in time as something CI. I'm not sure if it was this incident though. But because the CEOs were having difficulty getting inside of the dorm, they started gassing the dorm through the windows, which are just graded holes. So they're walking up to the windows and firing off gas, trying to get people to stop crashing. And everybody's just going nuts in there. They're tearing it down. And this is an open bay dorm. This is nothing but bunk beds. There's no cells in here or anything like that. It's just... You know what I'm saying? Some gladiator shit. You got to be ready for when things pop off like this because you'll find yourself in prison in situations where nobody can save you. You got to be able to physically save yourself or have a weapon that's going to be able to handle up. Now, Yogi's telling me this shit and I'm just like, damn, you a badass jit. Like, no wonder you in prison. You know what I'm saying? But he was cool as shit though. And Yogi, you know, he rocked with... Yeah, yo, he wasn't a GD. He wasn't necessarily rocking with Tampa, even though he was from Tampa, because yeah, yo was a GD, and GDs weren't cool with Tampa. GDs are not even common inside the city of Tampa. You know what I mean? But he was just going to rock with his cousin, his people. That's what he's supposed to do. And you know, I liked, bro. I liked, um, I liked this vibe. He was a cool person. I felt bad for him, though, because... At one point or another, we got mail, and the mail came. It was from, I believe, his mother or some family member. I believe it was his mom. And, uh, you know, that's when Yogi told me that he couldn't read. And I was like, like, stop playing. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not thinking he's serious because he's got mad letters and shit, you know? But he told me um, he don't, he don't know how to read. I was like, oh, you for real? You know what I'm saying? So I was like, well, you know, give me the letter. I'll read it for you. And, you know, I read it as best as I could. There were some things I was, you know, written in Spanish and shit. So I had to, like, do my best to say whatever the hell I thought I was trying to say or whatever. But, you know, from that point on, I would I would read him his letters and, you know, try to, like, teach him a little bit. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I felt bad for that kid. Because it was just like, he was just a young, badass kid, and he's sitting inside of prison. He don't even know how to read. He can't even read his own mama's letters. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying that in the sense of degrading him. I'm saying that in the sense I felt bad for him and feel like it must be more than just him. It must be somebody at some point or another failed him in his life for him to be 14 in prison and not able to read. You know what I'm saying? I don't know the circumstances of the background of his life and life story, but... You know, I had his back. I wasn't going to do nothing crazy to him or try to extort him. I was going to read the letters as I did. And, you know, sometimes I read old letters to him, too, just because he liked, you know, rehearing it. You know what I'm saying? Because he literally just had papers from his family that he couldn't, he couldn't read. But we more or less just vibed out in the cell. I mean, there were times where we would gamble. We would try to play like... Whatever we could, we would make cards, we would make little chess pieces or whatever and whatnot, and we would bet like biscuits, coffee cakes, whatever we was getting in confinement at the time, we might try to bet on food or if we came up on stamps or something like that. But you know, we looked out for each other and it was it was cool vibes in the cell with bro. I'm not sure what happened to him. I'm pretty sure he didn't have that much time left. I don't think he ever had to go to an adult compound, which is a good thing because... There's a lot of people inside of prison that wouldn't have read those letters. There's a lot of people that wouldn't have cared about who he is, where he's from. They would have just saw his size, his vulnerability, and they would have took full advantage of that. Whether it's, you know, physically, violently, sexually. This is prison. This is how prison is. Um, and, you know, even though I did a lot of shit inside of prison... And I did a lot of shit in the streets and I did a lot of things that I have no sympathy for, that I don't feel bad for, that I don't regret. There's plenty of things that I do. And I'm glad in this given situation where I met someone that I'll probably never meet again. I have no regrets in this situation. I feel that, you know, I did what I should have done. I did what was right. And I did something that was kind to another person. And it's little things like that inside of prison that keep you human, that keep you attached with the good person that you still are or can be, 
even though you're surrounded by nothing but madness. And sometimes you have to show you can be just as evil and violent as others, even though that isn't your true calling. That's not who you want to be as a person, but more so who you have to be as a person. But hey, I hope y'all enjoyed the story. If Yogi ever watches this, I fuck with you, bro. You got to hit me up, little bro. If Yayo ever watches this, my bad. <laughs> and if the girl ever watches this, man, fuck you, because you stop writing me. But hey, it's 10 out of J. I'm rocking with y'all. Let y'all rocking with me. Till next time.